I think I just got on a trip to Ghana, mm-hmm. returned, and just out of the blues, I got. I went to an event, and then the moment they mentioned my name, that was it. I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. So random. Really? And then yes. What triggered you to start doing um, gospel? For me personally, I want to sing about my reality, and okay. my reality is Jesus Christ. And how has it been so far? It comes with these challenges. And let's be honest, how many record labels in Ghana have had like success, good success rates like over the years? Very, and that was like 2009 or something. 2009, like, yeah, and right. even back then, mm-hmm. you had to really have talent before you were noticed in Ghana. True. I love Nigerians. Ever since I, I, I decided to go on this journey of mm-hmm. doing gospel music and everything, I think the Nigerians have really embraced me a lot within the diaspora. Surprisingly. As compared to Ghanaians. I would tell you the truth. Mm. Back when I was doing like, you know, the medals and things like yeah. that, I was so bothered about people's perception of me. No, I don't care. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Journey Show. Uh, probably this is your first time watching The Journey Show. We talk about lifestyle, we talk about achievements, we talk about other social issues. My name is Nana Adam Jr. And today our guest is Fritz Oakley. Fritz is uh, an outstanding musician. We're going to sit down and have a conversation and see, you know, what he has to tell us. All right, don't go nowhere. Stick around. You'll be back soon. My man, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm, so so I'm, glad to have you here. Thank you, appreciate you it. You finally made time for us. Finally, finally. <laughs> I, I, I figured if I didn't come, mm-hmm. um, then it was probably going to take forever for me yeah, to come. Yeah, you've been so. super tight lately, man. Very busy. But yeah. Um, How's it going so far? Life, you know, summer, all of that? This summer uh-huh. hasn't summit properly. Oh, sir? The summer wasn't <laughs> given what it was supposed to give. What, what, what were you expecting? No, I think maybe I've had more exciting summers, but I also think that you know, the more you grow, the more you find out and less exciting. Yeah, you just want to stay indoors, right? I think your responsibilities to go higher, Mm -hmm, responsibilities mm -hmm. get bigger. So, I think the only fun thing I did in the summer was I did a three day quick trip to London. Oh, yeah, to go and watch a friend's concert, and I came back low key. But I think you have you have family there too, right? I have a lot of family there. Right. Yes, I lived in London for a while. Uh huh. For, for how long? Almost a decade, if I'm not mistaken. Look at that. Yeah. And you, you, you moved to Ghana, or just came straight to to the US? I relocated to the states after. I think after I finished my masters. This is okay. like a while ago. Yeah. All right. Last night, right? I was watching some of your videos on on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And man, I could see the huge transformation right. in you, you know, the music that you were doing back then mm-hmm. and even your looks right now. I was watching this video, Medo featuring Guru. <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> How did you get Guru on that track? Truth be told, I, I didn't know Guru mm-hmm. in the start, but luckily for me, um, I... I, Kewa, you know, Kewa was a producer of the song and, okay. you know, Kewa was very connected back in the days. Mm. Uh, most of the artists from Sa Kordia to, you know, like all the big names right. in Afro, Afro beats or like hip life used to, you know, trip that studio a lot. And That's right. I, I, um, Kewa had a good relationship with Guru. Mm. And so initially I had somebody else in mind. I think it was Asem or Sa Kordia. I can't remember who oh. it was. But I think it was hard to reach them or they were busy and right. we wanted to get our song out as soon as possible. Right. And I was like, yo, Guru, want to jump on this song? And he just came and like in less than an hour, like oh, really? he just put his, yeah, his, his verse on it. And then that's how that song came about. Interesting. Yeah. You were doing like R&B back then, right? Yes. I was doing secular music. For secular like music. Words, yeah. And what triggered you to start doing um, gospel? I do believe in purpose. I do believe in um, fulfilling destiny. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, I want to sing about my reality and okay. my reality is Jesus Christ. Okay. I see and so nothing crazy happened. I'm like, this is not me. This is mm. not what I live for. Was I perfect back then? No. But still, I figured like there was a void that I, I couldn't point it out. And the only time I realized I was living in my purpose was when I decided to, you know, completely like devote my gift to God. Okay. Yeah. And how has it been so far? 
comes with these challenges. It comes with these challenges. And, you know, sometimes you wonder, you're like, oh, my God. Like, I was thinking that, you know, when I dedicate my life to Christ and, you know, <laughs> I'm using my gift to serve him, everything right. is going to be a bed of roses. But mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that is not the case. Ooh. And, you know, and and and, and you, you see, um, Christianity is not to make you comfortable in life. It's right. to make you... It's to make you a better person. Mm -hmm. It's to make you kingdom-minded. And right. being kingdom-minded means that you have to choose a narrow path. And so regardless of whatever is going on around you, you still have to stay close to the anchor, hold right. on to the anchor. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, pretty much that's been my... <laughs> 2009, you went to this, uh, the Voice Factory music reality show, something like that, right? Yeah, I did. How, how did you get in that? I think I, I think I was in my first year in college. Okay. I... I think yeah, I was first in college, and you know my 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 family. I wouldn't say my my parents were very strict, mm -hmm. you know. And mind you, I went to college like very early. I think most of my mates were, um, I would say, a year or two older than I was. So mm. I went to college pretty like earlier than you know the average age. And I I was thinking in high school, but when I came to uni, I'm like, well, I need to do something. And so I think there was a commercial. I think a friend of mine said, hey. There was there's this singing reality show, mm -hmm. and that you know it's not going to be on TV, but it's going to be on radio. I'm like, good, uh, this is it. And uh, so, why you didn't want to put your face out there? Exactly, the uh, goal was never. I didn't want to get noticed. Okay, and that's like that's what a like I, we'll come to that. But like, but I you were still doing music. I was doing music, but you know, <laughs> I I I wanted to eat my cake and have it. I I I didn't want people to know the face behind the voice ah. you know it does everything just caught up with me so mm -hmm. it was a uh, initially it was supposed to be a radio um singing competition a radio yeah. like talent hunt mm -hmm. and then we had gone for the a friend of actually a f i went to escort a friend of mine actually i wasn't even the one supposed to audition really yeah it wasn't me we went i think we we're roommates back then we went to the audition tent um he went in he didn't make it oh and he was like oh fritz i think you should try this and it really is, bro, I came to a scorch. I'm like, you know what? Like, that's fine. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, and so even though I knew about it or whatever, mm -hmm. in my head, I knew I was going to audition, but I wasn't too confident about it. But after my friend didn't make it, mm -hmm. I was like, no, we can't come here and go back home. And mm -hmm. none of us, you know, I'm like, you know, let's go. Right. Let me give it a try. So when I went in, I was looking funny because I wasn't prepared for an audition, mm -hmm. the way I was dressed and mm -hmm. everything. And, and the confidence, so the, I had confidence in going to the auditions because right. I'm like, okay, nobody knows my face. It's a radio <laughs> thing. So I went in and um, the moment I sang the first line, mm. you could hear a pin drop. They were like, Ooh. so that's how it started. Um, and then the rest is history. We went through 14 or 13 or 14 grilling weeks wow. of um, intense competition back to back. You know, people were ev evicted along the line. People mm -hmm. were crying and all that. But by the time I would have realized my name, was, my face was on the newspapers. And you became the winner, right? Yeah, I became the winner Look at ultimately. That. The funny thing is my, uh -huh. my parents didn't know. My mom was at work and my mom come like, hey, I've seen your face on the TV. What are, you don't even like, what are you doing in the newspapers? <laughs> what are you doing on TV? I'm like, um, um, because the truth is, I was in school studying maths and statistics. Okay. I was doing like, I wasn't doing like, you know, like, any any pro program or course or subject that mm -hmm. you know you needed to be on top of your game right. academically, right. and so my parents were like, "Wait, first of all, how, how I told you not to do this, and then you know, I was like, you know, and but my mom is a very competitive person. She yeah. was like, you know, even though I I didn't want you to be doing this, you're already there, you'd be there like, already. So I just have to support you, mm -hmm. and then that's mm -hmm. what happened. Wow, yeah, I became the winner. Um, I think it was. I think it was on the eleventh or 9th of September, two thousand and nine. Mm, right, and what happened afterwards? After winning the competition, right. luckily for me, I had like a great team around me. Mm -hmm. I had Jessica Opari Suffer, formerly of CTFM. I had mm. Sammy Forsen. Oh, Jessica. Yes, nice. Those were my managers, Sammy Forsen and Jessica. Right. My first year, they were managing my, you know, and. You know, they of obviously like my mom was the executive producer okay. as well, and so you know my mom was pretty much financing most of my project, and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Jessica and Sammy Forsen were pretty much doing the you know pretty much the administrative right. you know part, and you know the um, AR and PR mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that. And then you know things happen. I you know went on to do the collaborations. I <laughs> wanted to be nominated for Ghana Music Awards. Wow, uh, yeah, for some music video awards and mm -hmm. things like that. I performed a couple of times, and then. I went quiet. Mm. I went quiet when I relocated to the UK. And that is why I met Christ. I met I God see. in a, you know, and I did, and not like I didn't know God, but right. I, 
I, I got closer to God and then mm -hmm. that's when everything shifted. Before you meeting Christ, I want to know like when you won that reality show, right? Did any record label reach out to you be like, oh, hey, Fritz, we've seen you did this, you know, and we would like to work with you. Did you have any encounter like that? I had a couple of organizations reach out mm -hmm. though. I can't, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, because back back in the days, I don't know how things are now, but like yeah. back in the days, most of these labels were run by individuals. Mm. Somebody has got money like, hey, you know, I'm setting yeah. this record yeah. label. I want you to be on. But fortunately for me, I didn't want to be tied to any contract. That's right. Luckily, and by God's grace, I was I was a bit sound academically. So mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted. And right. I didn't want anybody to have to control what I wanted or where I should be and all that. And mm. luckily for me, my mom was the one who was financing most of my project. And okay. so it was easier for me. So I didn't necessarily need someone's support. I did. I, I I wouldn't say that. I'm choosing my words correctly, so people don't think this boy is proud. I'm not proud. I'm probably, you know. But um, it, it was more so of I I didn't want any restrictions, right? You know, if it's your family member who is supporting you and everything, and then Jessica and Sammy Fawson, they were doing their best, right? The A and R was mm -hmm. like top notch. Whoa. Like Jessica was an influential right. figure in the industry, so it was. Nah, Jessica easy. is amazing. Yes, she's amazing. You know, I still stay in touch with her. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and so I had that team. Right. I feel like we were more like a, a formidable force, mm -hmm. and my my roommates doubled as my road manager and mm -hmm. things like. This. So it was easier for me. So I didn't need um, you know any any record label at yeah, that time yeah and let's be honest how many record labels in ghana have had like success good success rates like over the years really? and that was like 2009 or something 2009 like, yeah, and exactly. even back then mm -hmm. you had to really have talent before you were noticed in ghana True. right now anybody can just come and just do anything on social media tiktok is there Instagram. Mm -hmm. in my time youtube wasn't even really a thing even though it was there, it wasn't mm -hmm. really, people were not really paying attention to, right. people would get to hear a song through radio mm -hmm. or through like television. Yeah. And so, yeah. So and you said you moved to London and that's how the, the, you know, the silence came through. Do you think that if you had stayed in Ghana, your music career would have taken a sky uh, rocket if you had stayed in Ghana? Looking back now and knowing what I know now, yeah, I think one of the things, one of the mistakes that any human being could make is staying outside the will of God. Right. Was it God's will for me to do what I did or used to, you know, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. for me, and as much as, you know, it, it might look very attractive, or maybe if you would have stayed and everything, I'm comfortable in the will of God. Okay. So long as I know God is smiling and God approves me. And I think now, but I'm, it's a, it might be a bit too early to say this in the interview, but mm -hmm. I'll say this. Staying in the will of God is gives me more satisfaction or is more important to me mm -hmm. than the fame. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's not about the glitz and glams anymore. It's yes. Yeah. I, because the reality is in the next, God knows, you never know when you'll be called. That's right. And we are going to give an account of, you know, of what we use our gifts for. Mm -hmm. And everybody's different. Personally, right. for me, I know and I have this conviction that my gift is to draw people onto Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, so long as I'm able to stay. So even if nobody gets to hear my name, even if my name never gets popular, even, even though I don't get, I don't become viral or whatever, mm -hmm. and I don't get on the holy walk, walk of fame or whatever, mm -hmm. and I, I'm approved by God, that is all that matters. That's, that's all matters. Because... Too. Fame on earth doesn't mean anything. Fame in heaven is the ultimate. If God knows me, that's all that matters. If people on earth don't know me, that's okay. Alrighty. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your 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 life in Ghana. You know, how was it? Where where were you living in Ghana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up, I grew up. Listen, my, my parents were decent, you know, my, you know. Man, I, I can tell. Right? <laughs> no, my parents were very decent. Um, and my, my, I grew up in, in, in Medina. Born you grew up in Medina? Yes. Ah. Born and raised in Adenta. Uh -huh. Then I think my developmental years, we moved to Medina. Yeah. And then, you know, a little bit of East Ligon. Mm. And then I, I, you know, I, I moved out um, and relocated to the UK. Uh, growing up was quite interesting. I had a taste of everything. And Medina is not your typical ghetto area. Yeah, Medina, yeah. you have a bit of everything. Right. We had 
the rich, the poor, mm-hmm. the elite, the middle, middle class, class, upper yeah. class. And so I think my fondest memories growing up was living in Medina. Mm. You know, I got to experience how being a dada bar was. I got to experience, <laughs> yeah, I got to experience how being a kubola was. Right. I remember like I walk barefooted from Medina New Road to Medina Old Road and come back. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when the kubola boys are going, we yeah. follow them and uh-huh. things like that. And so even though a lot of people would think I might have this dada disposition yeah. or whatever. Of course you do, man. I still have a little ghetto in you. <laughs> Get to know her. Yeah, I'm serious. But you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is not. I'm. I'm pretty sure this is not just me. There are a lot of people out there who still believe you're a Nigerian. And I'm. I'm sure you've heard this like thousand times. Yes. But for the sake of the new audience on this show, how do you take that? How do I even answer this? Um. Mm-hmm. So. I am Ghanaian. Okay. I hail from the Volta region. Oh really? Yes. Huh. I'm from the Volta region, hundred percent Volta. You speak the you speak Airway? Of course. Fluently. Very well. Metroni right. now. Really? Yes. You know, and my a little bit of my roots, you know, from maybe my grandparents' side. It's mm-hmm. a little it's mm-hmm. from Nigeria, yeah. Sokoto, that kind of thing. So maybe that is where maybe this unassuming looks come from. Oh. And so yeah, and you know, my dad. Pretty much, you know, grew up a little bit in Nigeria as well. Mm-hmm. So so every time people, oh, he's Nigerian, I'm like, okay, I'm going to just take that for myself. And don't get me wrong, I love Nigerians. My manager is Nigerian. Her name is Nkechi. She's okay. Nigerian. She does okay. a phenomenal job. Um, I wear her a lot, but, she, you know, she does it. And, you know, um, and so far, I think that ever since I, I, I decided to go on this journey mm-hmm. of doing gospel music and everything, I think the Nigerians have really embraced me a lot within the diaspora. Surprisingly. As compared to Ghanaians. I would tell you the truth. Mm. That is the sad reality. Mm. And I'm not trying to, you know, I love Ghanaians. I know that, you know, there's a vast majority of Ghanaians who support me. However, right. um, my, my, my heart, like Nigeria, yeah, they, they're my people too. Amazing. Exactly. That's good. You go where you are accepted. Correct. Mm-hmm. I know you've been hosting shows in the US. You're doing almost every December. Yes, I do. Like Christmas with Oakley and friends. You did it last year, 2023. I was there. Yeah was amazing. Thank I really you. enjoyed myself. Congrats, man. Thank you. How long have you been doing it? I started in 20, 2016. 2016. This was, I think, a year after I, I moved to the US. Mm. And I started my first event. I only had like 16 people. Your first event, you only had like 16 people. Yeah, rough. At most 20. Wow. We used to do it in this, like in, 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 in a small venue in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. So back in the days, it was called Christmas in Manhattan. Okay. Because, you know, and... That was the entire idea. I remember I didn't even have money to pay for the venue. So mm. I think one of my team members, his name is Kobe. Okay. Because I just come to America. You know, can you come, Charlie? The goal is just, you know, for us to just like, you know. Um, do something. Yeah, do something. It's Christmas. You know, I'm a singer. You know, I, yeah. And so that was the entire. And then I realized mm-hmm. that over the years, like I didn't stop there. Mm-hmm. Not having money to pay for the venue didn't stop me. Right. So I was very consistent and very persistent mm. with it. And over the years, it has morphed into something. And I think the year that really shocked me the most was 2020. was the year of the COVID. 2020. COVID, right? Wow. It was... Yeah, a lot of people were scared to go out. It was... The venue was so packed. We had more than 300 people. I was so scared because I'm used to... Definitely, I'll be scared too. Because 2020, wow. Yeah, because we started from 40 people, like 20 people, uh-huh, 40 uh-huh. people, you know, sometimes 60, 70. And then it went to... It just jumped Wow. To, and so that is the power of prayer and consistency. That's right. Because I've noticed something and I, and, and I know only because I've experienced it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's... God checks our motive and our agenda. That's right. The goal wasn't to, oh, Midi Jimmy Dean, you mm-hmm. know, I want people to know. Yeah. The goal, ultimate goal was to thank God for bringing us th- like thus far. Because January, February, March, April, May, June, all through to December. Mm-hmm. And so it was an avenue for me to just say, hey, you know, like, God, thank you. And, you know, just like have a couple of friends with me. Right. Just to, and so that was the entire motive. Mm. And... You know, coupled with my, you know, like consistency, and yeah. I realized it. You know, so from there we decided, you know, this thing has gotten bigger. Mm-hmm. So we st- had to change venues, mm. and then 2022 we did the Shambek Theater mm-hmm. sold out. Wow. I was shocked as well. 
Last year, I had a couple of health challenges, but God brought me out. Last year, 2023. Yeah, 2023. Okay. And I almost didn't do it. Mm. And I had barely a month to pull the show together. And people showed up in their numbers. So I would say ultimately that like, God has been good. Amazing. Christmas with Oakley and Friends is not about me. It's about God. Great. Yeah. Great. So if you say that you almost didn't, you know, you almost canceled last year's show, what happened? Yeah, I it's a lot. I, I wouldn't go too much into details, but last year, mm. huh? I um how do I put this? I just I think I just got on a trip to Ghana, mm -hmm. returned and just out of the blues. I got I went to an event and then the moment they mentioned my name, that was it. I couldn't hear anything, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. So random. Really? And then yes. And it was, and then my show was getting closer and closer. Even as of Thanksgiving, I, I could, I couldn't, you couldn't walk. do, you, you no. couldn't even walk. No, I couldn't walk. I, yes, I, and I remember um, some of my friends would, you know, luckily for me, mm -hmm. I, I have a, a phenomenal team. Um, the Christmas with Oakley and Friends team, Ivania, mm. I, I can't mention everybody's name, but Oakley and Friends team, you know what they did? Mm. Even in my absence, they would still go for rehearsals. And when they finish, sometimes they'll come and visit me in the hospital mm -hmm. or they come and visit me in the house. And so I told myself, if by Thanksgiving I don't recover, I'll cancel the show. And, you know, what surprised people the most was the fact that I was in my hospital bed and I was still sharing flyers on social media. <laughs> so when I actually... People didn't even know what was going on behind the People didn't the know what was going on, yeah. So it was just that people who were close to people. Yes. So it was during the Oakland Friends that I gave the testimony mm -hmm. and... A lot of people like had tears in their eyes because mm. it's like, oh wow, like you went through all that and you still, you know, like put yeah. put on like a yeah. show like this and all that. So, yeah, um, I'm grateful to God so far, and God has been faithful. Good. That's all I can say. And last year I was there, you know, with my boss Joba. We had a great time. Thank you. I'm you glad know. you had a great time. Quick one. What is the one thing that no amount of pressure can make you do? No amount of pressure will make me do mm -hmm. that one thing that no amount of pressure will make me do. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> I, you know what, naturally, I'm not, I'm not faced by pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think it comes with, with, with confidence mm -hmm. in the one you serve. And then, I consider my body as a temple. Mm. And for me, if you have the Holy Spirit convicting you mm -hmm. and you like you wake up daily, you pray and everything, you have a close relationship with the with the Holy Spirit. I, I don't there there's so many things. Like Obian to me in Shami Swoo. Just admit, like I have and my confidence, people think I'm my confidence is in the Holy like in God. I, yeah. I believe and so because of that, like I'm constantly convicted. Mm -hmm. So I don't I, it's that no, it's a lot of things. Like, n nothing can make me... Nah. Yeah. Not even the worst of situations. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, even like, even, uh, you know, when last year I thought I was at the verge of death or whatever, mm. and people would be like, oh, you know, it would look like, you know, I'm like, wait, I'm a Christian. Why would I, yeah, why would I, or why would I even be mad at God? Or why would they, somebody would say, oh, just curse God and, you know, just li nothing. Yeah. Even in death. Jesus Christ or nothing. Have you faced any backlash for taking a stand on social issues through your music or public statements? Yes, yeah, slightly over the years. Slightly. Yes, like just a little bit. But, you know, I think it was more so about how people, just how people in the industry, mm -hmm. I think support from the people in the industry and, mm -hmm. you know, how... They they don't they don't support, but they expect other people to support them. And I right. think I used to be a great Afri you know advocate of that, but I just stopped because I'm like I had to check my mom. Like, well, first of all, why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. It's not as if I'm doing circular music. I'm not thinking about somebody's waste or whatever. I'm yeah. thinking about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if it's kingdom music, why should I be bothered about whether human beings support or not? Right. So I just stopped. I, I, I think it was more so about. You know how the intensity with which Nigerians support their music artists, acts, yeah, or, or, or like or artists, and then how like Ghanaians nonchalantly just see their artists and you know like Whatever. nobody, yeah, yeah, mm. and and they really it was true, but I don't. Know so you they, talked about that. I talked about that, and okay. yeah, people were not too happy about the way so I they started back backlashing you. Yeah, here and, there. and then but you know 
I mean, people grow, people change, and so. How do you um, feel about that? Honestly, though, bro, like me, I do. Mm-hmm. You, I, th- I think it also comes with age. Yeah, if you've seen yeah. it, been dead, done that. If you've been at the verge of death before, like not, you are faced by nothing at all. Mm. So cool. I, I, back in what, when I was younger, mm-hmm. back when I was doing like you know the medals and things like yeah. that, I was so bothered about people's perception of me. No, I don't care. Like I don't, I, I don't care. Life as it is is stressful. You were not about to like your opinion of, of me does not put food on my table. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything, and right. you know, so long as God approves, that's all that matters. How has technology influenced your approach to creating music? I think it's made it simpler. It's made it easier. It made it simpler this time. Yeah, it's mm. made it easier. You don't so much so that people don't even need record labels as much as that's they true. did. Like you can just, and of course, do, I'm not trying to mm-hmm. completely dismiss the essence of, you know, like record labels yeah. and, you know, how they affect the careers of mm-hmm. artists. But I think that it's become easier so much so that people who don't even have the money to, you know, produce their own music and, you know, promote songs and yeah. things like that. It's easier. So it's, it's easier this time. It's easier. That's why you see that like, right now, like, like, they're like a billion artists, like right. every time you go on right. social media, like somebody's releasing music somebody's doing something mm-hmm. and so it's made things easier back in my days master when before <laughs> even people even get to hear so you, the amount of channels you have to go through right right now it's just a click away just go on instagram or tiktok yeah and then, you know if you're lucky it goes viral and then that's it i have this random question that uh, mm-hmm. uh, i'll ask you and then you tell me what you think sure all right sure. between a Ghanaian woman and a nigerian woman who would you like to go on a date with <laughs> I just have to choose one answer. Yes. I'll go with the Ghanaian. Ghanaian woman. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds fair. What is the most embarrassing thing to happen to you during a job interview? Wow. That, you know, maybe you lied on your resume and then they're asking a question. I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. It happens. It used to happen to me a lot back in the day. Word. <laughs> yeah. It's so you, lied, you lied on your resume. I mean, God, God, God forgive, you know, me for, but you know, I mean, we've done things in the past. Of you course, know, we've and, all done things. Yeah. And, you know, you lie so much on your resume and then mm-hmm. they're asking you a question about your, your, your acclaimed experience. And then you don't, you don't even know how to answer it. Mm. And so that has been very interesting yeah what is the first thing you would do if you get if your heart gets broken i'm going to eat and watch chinese movies really heartbreak bro no <laughs> no i'm gonna make chinese movies like mm. chinese movies you love these chinese movies oh my god forget it <laughs> my chinese movies is who would you call first if a woman denies your proposal I'm probably gonna call my sister. Mm. Yeah, my, my She's little sister. Yeah, my little sister. Yeah, I just call her. Like you know, I I I I talk to yeah. That's my my you know. Or maybe I'll probably speak to my best friend Stephen. <laughs> yeah, one of them. One of them depends on who is available. Uh, yeah. All right. Name a place you stopped going to when you were broke. <sighs> place I stopped going to. <laughs> I I I broke. I'll tell you the truth, right? <laughs> Even in my lowest moments, I've always been fancy. So I mm. can Oh, yes. Always been fancy. Okay. okay. But let me see. Let me see. <laughs> That's a difficult question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say... Nah. I, what's that? M- me, I, like, brand, don't know. It's not even about brand. Uh-huh. That's just a me. I've always wanted the best things. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right, next one. Name something you don't want people to ask you for. Don't come and ask me for my car. Your car, yeah, it's special to you, huh? It's not that like when you like I, I, I'm paranoid. Like you come and take my car, you go and crash it or something. Then it, it looks like okay, now I have to beg you to fix nah, it, bro. No, I'm not giving it to you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't like when people do that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awkward, and it's always those who are around you who will come and ask. Yeah. And, and for me, I don't know how to minim mm-hmm. I car. I'm not mm-hmm. that type. Like mm-hmm. I'll just let it slide. And so I don't want to put myself in that mental right. trauma. Even money, if somebody asks me for money, I'm I i do not know how to um, say no. Loan people money. I'd rather just give you what I can and that's right. it. I don't expect you to pay me back. That's right. Yeah. All right. Last one. Name a word that rhymes with pony. Pony. Tony. Tony. 
yeah yeah all right all right all right so as we bring our conversation to the uh final point what do you have to say what are we what should we expect from you as a musician you know the next five ten years to come what should we expect from um the brand fritz oakley um i think you know, that's a difficult question to work but i would say this that in the next five ten years I would have revealed Christ enough through mm-hmm. my music, through my lifestyle, mm-hmm. through my post on social media that, you know, even the person with, the, you know, little faith, you know, can can really attest to the fact that God mm-hmm. is good. So that is what I, that's the goal. It's not, listen, if God wants me to, to become extraordinarily famous, yeah, glory be to God. Mm-hmm. But I think one day after all is said and done and I'm gray and old, I want to look back and say, yes, God, I have fulfilled everything you asked me to come and do. Yeah. Your final words to your fellow um, Christians out there. Ah, Don't stop praying. Mm -hmm. Don't stop reading your Bible. You cannot outpray disobedience. You can't. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You want a breakthrough in life, stay in alignment with God and everything will fall in pleasant places in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm super grateful that you came through for us I am glad I came too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of another episode on The Journey Show. My name is Nana Adum Jr. Thank you so much for watching and we will definitely meet again next time.